wow. How's the mic? Pretty good? I'm going to mix it up. I would like everybody to stand up and put your arms in the air and stretch to the right, stretch to the left. If you are able, stretch forward. Don't reveal any body parts to the people behind you. Yeah, that feels good, doesn't it? Great, thanks for doing what I tell you. Um, sit down. <laughs> And I want to thank Daphna and Michael and all the volunteers who made this afternoon possible. It's really an amazing event. I feel so honored to be here, and it's kind of nerve-wracking. So on that uh, topic of nerve-wracking, um, I would like to tell a story that was both very illuminating for me and also excruciating and embarrassing. So I'm a professor, and I usually teach three classes a semester. And uh, one semester, um, I got a call from a friend, and the friend said, hey, I am so crushed, and um, I'm wondering if you could do me a favor. Sure, no problem. What is it? Can you walk my dog, like, at 2 in the afternoon? And I thought, oh my gosh, I have a class at 3, and, and I did this whole mental calculation, and what do you think I said? I said, sure, no problem, absolutely. And then I put down the phone. And I started speechifying in my head and grumbling. And the whole time I drove to the, my friend's house and walked the dog and drove back, I was like on like hyperdrive of aggravation. Why am I doing this? It's so, I'm too busy. And I did it. And it was also a moment where things in my personal life were starting to shift. And I thought, I am saying yes a lot. And I wonder if saying yes is contributing to my high blood pressure and my waking up at 2 in the morning a lot and my general sense of un unhappiness in the world. Hmm, is there a relationship? Maybe I should investigate. I'm a sociologist. Let's think about it. So I'm wondering if that story resonates for anybody in the room where you've said yes to something and then you started speechifying in your head. OK, so I want to take the temperature of the room. And please nod or like say, hail yeah, if this um, has ever happened to you. So have you ever accepted a job where uh, you didn't get paid, but you really should have? Can I see a show of hands? Uh-huh. That's what I'm talking about. Have you ever um, told a little bit of a white lie and then felt guilty afterwards when you said no to something, to a request, to a volunteer gig? something maybe at your church or your synagogue, okay. And have you ever um, thought about saying no, but you say yes, and then you do it, and you feel really, really bad, like really bad? Okay, so, so what I want to talk about today, for those of you for whom this is relevant, is um, it is the epidemic that I call people-pleasing. And I think that everybody is susceptible to people-pleasing, but I think for women and girls in particular, people-pleasing is a really systemic problem. Now, what is people-pleasing? Here's my definition, and you might agree or disagree. I think people-pleasing is what girls and women learn growing up, and I'll talk about that in a sec, um, to uh, look externally to the outside world for the three A's for affirmation, for acceptance, and approval, rather than looking inside oneself for affirmation, acceptance, and approval. And when we seek out external sources for those three A's, we often say yes at the expense of ourselves. I'm seeing nodding heads. Mm-hmm, say yes. So um, what I think that does is saying yes at the expense of ourselves to seek approval or acceptance or affirmation actually undermines our own power. It undermines our integrity. And it, and it depletes our energy reserves, both individually as women in our lives, but also collectively as a society, and definitely economically. We often say yes to the first salary that we are offered instead of negotiating. 
We often say yes to jobs that really don't fit with our core mission, but we do it because we think that that's the right thing to do. And that can really gnaw at our souls because it really cuts into our sense of integrity, our, in our authenticity, and what we feel like we're really supposed to be doing, but we're too busy doing these other things because they bring us affirmation and approval and acceptance. So where do we learn this? Hello, Disney princess party. We learn it from the time we are born. We learn it from our parents. I love my parents, but they are the worst culprits. Oh, this is going to be publicized. Oh my god, this is on the web. Oh god. I love my parents, but they totally fed that. And uh, heaping praise and le leading me to think, oh, if I say yes to this, then I will get acceptance and approval and affirmation. We also learn it from the media. We learn it from uh, our peers. If you just take up less space, people will really like you. If you end every sentence that you have to say with a question, you won't be seen as like a really rude, aggressive person. <laughs> if you, this is what I see in my college classes all the time, and it just hurts my heart. What I have to say is really not important, and it's really silly, but brilliant insight, brilliant question follows. Why are you apologizing for something awesome that you have to contribute to the conversation? That's deeply problematic, and it's part of the epidemic of people-pleasing that women and girls learn at a very young age. I see it in my own life, obviously. I see it in my friends. I see it in the high school and the college students that I teach, and it's really painful because it is 2012, and the second wave of the women's movement started in the 1960s. That's a long time. We have a lot of way to go in terms of learning who we are and how we can be more powerful in the world. So here's uh, the issue. Saying no is really, really hard. It's so hard. Why? Because we fear that if we say no, we are not going to be loved or accepted. Or if we say no to someone or something, we're going to be rejected. We're not going to be accepted by our friends or our family or the people who are important to us. And also, if, if we say no to something that really doesn't meet our core purpose or mission in life, whatever that might be, sometimes I think we are afraid that we're not going to get opportunities that might be better in the future. And so we just say yes, because it's right there. And that's, that's good enough. It's not good enough, actually. So it's really, really, really hard to say no. And sometimes, if you do start saying no after you've say it, said yes for a long time, and I am speaking from personal experience, let me tell you, you get a lot of blowback. People get mad because they're used to taking advantage of you. They're used to the default assumption that you're just going to say yes. And so saying no when people are not expecting no can really change your family relationships, your friendships, it can change relationships in the workplace, it can cause a lot of friction and also a lot of internal pain. Um, as I've kind of learned from experience about what happens when you say no and when you start blowback, you get a lot of what ifs in your mind. And here are just some what ifs. What if I say no to the salary I'm offered and make a counter offer that is really what I want and is $25,000 more because I deserve it. What if I say, you know what? I really hate cooking and shopping and cleaning and doing the laundry. So we're going to divvy up the responsibilities equally and here's what I'm going to do and here are the days that I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. What if you say to a friend, I'm really tired of driving cross town to see you, so we either get together at my place or in my neighborhood, or we meet halfway, because I'm just tired. Or what if we say to our loved ones, maybe our mom, or maybe our sister, or maybe our dad, you know what, you really can't talk to me that way anymore. I love you, but no. Boundaries and limits are good, and I'm driving the bus of how I want to be treated, and how I want to be respected. So no, you cannot do that anymore. 
blowback. It's a really intense experience. So what I want to suggest is that saying no can be a form of freedom and liberation. And I don't take that lightly. A form of freedom and liberation can come from saying no because it means you have more space to say yes to what is really meaningful and what is really deeply important to you. And what I'm talking about is more relaxation. Saying no to assignments or volunteer tasks that you don't really, really love. Oh my gosh, all of a sudden, all this free time opens up. Saying no to people who deplete you of your authenticity means that you have space to find friends or hang out with family members who really see you for who you are and accept you unconditionally with love, not rejection. It also can give you more honesty with yourself when you say no. And I want you to think about that for the break. I'm gonna give you some homework assignments. What might you wanna say no to that will give you more freedom and allow you to be more honest with yourself so I grew up Jewish, and uh, really? And um, so I learned something that Judaism offered to the world, which I actually think is really awesome. It's called the Ten Commandments. How many of you have heard of them? <laughs> okay, great. So the Ten Commandments are, I don't like that word commandments. I just don't like it, Command, commandments. It's so authoritarian. Nobody's gonna tell me what to do. So I like the word commitment instead, because commitment implies some sort of relationship. And commandment or commitment uh, is about relationship to oneself, relationship to one's community, the people that you love or that you don't love, um, and, and commitment to something larger than yourself, whatever that might be. If it's a belief in something larger than yourself or a commitment to a, a movement or a cause or a purpose in life, that's great. So I'm going to lay down Dr. Karen's 10 commitments. You ready? Number one, I have more choices available to me than I think I do. And one of those choices is always no. Can everybody say the word no? One, two, three. No. no. Doesn't that feel great? Mm. Number two, I will be truthful and authentic. Telling the truth is a form of saying no when you really mean it to say yes to what you really, really want. Number three, I will ask directly for what I want and need. I find that a lot of high school girls and college women that I work with as a university professor are so indirect and so manipulative and so like not clear about saying yes and no. And it's really, really troubling to me because I think it's related to all of these issues. Asking for what you want directly. Number four, I will live without resentment. Mm. Saying no allows you to live with freedom, not a sense of being overburdened by obligation. Number five, I will honor my need for rest. Wow, imagine that. Number six, I will not apologize for saying no. Everybody say that out loud. I will not apologize for saying no. Good job. Oh, external affirmation, right? Um, I will not compromise my integrity to please others. Because when you do say yes to please others, and then you wind up really kicking yourself for saying yes, it compromises your core self. I will not say yes in ways that undermine my own power. Enough said. I will take time if I feel ambivalent. So you know what? I haven't made up my mind. You asked me to do something, I'm going to sleep on it. I'll get back to you in 24 hours. And really just go within to make a decision. Is this aligned with my mission? Or does this fit with my responsibilities? Or can I just pass this up and say, no, thank you. I'm not available. No apology. So here's the last one. And I have to remind myself of this last commitment every single day. I will say yes only when I really mean it. Only when I really mean it. And then I can honor that commitment with clarity and intention and motivation. 
So um, there is a quote by Hillel, who's a famous rabbi 1,800 years ago, and what he said that I think resonates for me about this topic is, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? If I am not for myself, who will be for me? And if I am only for myself, what am I? But the last question, if not now, when? By the way, um, that friend who I said yes to to walk the dog, that person hired a dog walker. <laughs> Thank you very much.